If you've ever called your mom after a long day of work and uttered these four words, I hate my boss, you're surely not alone. Hate is a strong word. So let's say that you dislike your boss, immensely so. It's the worst to feel overwhelmed, unheard, or taken advantage of at work. Having a bad boss can make you feel pretty demotivated and frankly, pretty hopeless. Bad bosses are intrinsically linked to employee unhappiness, high turnover, and the quality of work produced. In a Gallup State of the Workplace study, over half of the respondents reported that they had quit a job due to one person, their bad boss. There are certain ways to get through to your boss, to communicate your frustrations and build anew. There might even be certain situations in which your boss isn't bad. They are simply tough and you might grow from the learning experiences they are offering you, no matter how unappealing they may seem right now. Whatever your problem is with your boss, we have you covered. We have mapped out a few common gripes that employees have with their bosses and how to tackle them head on. Bad boss number one, the micromanager. The first sign of the biggest micromanager boss? They'll probably say to you, day one, I'm not a micromanager. I had a boss who, quote unquote, wasn't a micromanager, which was weird because he emailed me and texted me all through the weekend, sent me one-liner emails, and nitpicked everything I did. When I asked for a sit down for him to lay out exactly what he needed, he told me, again, I'm not a micromanager. Okay, but you are a micromanager, so how to handle a micromanager. Before writing off your boss as a micromanager, consider this. Are there things you need to learn from your boss? Are there elements of your job about which she is constantly correcting you? With new management, it is easier to have the conversation in order to reduce micromanagement. Take some time to make sure you understand all the parameters of your job. You might even go so far as to create an outline of your job responsibilities, to produce templates for certain projects, and to set up weekly meetings over your first 90 days. Always ask questions and always over communicate with a micromanager. By allowing your boss a glimpse into the details of the work you are doing, you might assuage their impulse to get involved unnecessarily. If your boss won't stop micromanaging you, it might be time to have a tougher conversation. Before speaking to your boss, take a moment to put yourself in their shoes. Are they micromanaging due to insecurity or fear? If you can pinpoint why the micromanagement is happening, you might find better solutions. Having a frank, honest conversation is the best way to tackle any management issue, head on. And guess what? Bosses are works in progress too. They might not admit it, but critical feedback is, and should be, an important element of any manager's career. So here's what to say to a micromanager. I know that XYZ project is important to company, and I'm very serious about doing the best work. However, your emails and phone calls repeatedly take me away from the work at hand. Can we create a weekly meetup or a daily email where I can fill you in on progress and receive feedback from you? Bad boss number two, the negative leader. It's not easy being the boss. No matter how big or how small your company is, there's likely to be some pending bottom line resting on their shoulders. If their team isn't performing and they're taking flack from higher ups, you're probably going to hear about it. There are times when a boss has every right to be negative. If your team screwed up a major project, and let's face it, we usually know when we're the guilty party, then there's naturally going to be some negative feedback. But what happens when you have a boss who is relentlessly negative? How to handle a negative boss. Negativity is like company culture common cold. It is extremely contagious and it takes hold inside everyone's head. Counteracting negativity can be as easy as letting your boss know that it is unhelpful to employee morale. Your boss might be very receptive to this heads up. Once I was told by a friend that I was skewing on the negative and it was such a wake up call. If your feedback isn't sticking, consider counteracting negativity with, you guessed it, positivity. Take the initiative to let your team know that they're doing a great job, to highlight and share successes, and to counter negative comments with positive ones. It's important that you do not take this approach passive aggressively. Make sure your positive reinforcement is coming from an actual place of positivity. What to say to the negative leader? I know you are frustrated with XYZ situation, but I think the team's morale could be improved with more positive reinforcement. Or, I know that Project XYZ didn't go off quite as planned, but I think that positive element was a success and we can build on that in the future. Bad boss number three, the phones it in boss. This is a frustrating one. I consider a good boss to be someone who has lived and learned from their experience. 
As a result, they remember what it was like to not be the boss. The boss who says one thing only to do a completely different thing is a puzzling animal indeed. In addition, to add more fuel to your fire, this type of boss usually takes credit for the final product. This is the kind of boss who phones it in, has no idea what goes on, and never rolls up their own shirt sleeves to get in on the action. However, that doesn't stop them from telling you what you're doing is wrong. This is the boss who is never in the office. This is the boss who assigns you one day to complete a project that requires two weeks to finish. How to handle a phones it in boss. The best leaders are built in the trenches. They are the leaders who are involved in the everyday. In this way, they know how to delegate best when the workload is too heavy and when to back off a bit. Having a leader who is unwilling to do any of this, well, that is unacceptable. This is a tougher conversation to have, mostly because this type of boss is likely deeply out of touch. In fact, they might not even know you that well. In some cases, especially on a larger team working under this boss, you might have taken on some of the work that they should be doing. You might be the de facto leader at the moment. This might be a conversation to have with your boss or with human resources. Being blatantly taken advantage of is unacceptable in any work environment, no matter what your job title indicates. What to say to a phone sit in boss. I have been working extremely hard on XYZ project and I feel that my work has not been adequately recognized. I would like to speak to you about your involvement in XYZ. As mentioned, you might wanna take an issue like this to HR. In a confidential setting, you might get a clear sense of what your boss's role is meant to be in your department. Bad boss number four, no empathy boss. Have you worked for years under a boss who doesn't even know where you live? Maybe this sounds silly, but it's important for leaders to lend a listening ear to their employees. There are always going to be unexpected challenges in the workplace, both professionally and personally. Having a boss who doesn't know her team, especially in the face of adversity, is going to see challenges in the inspiration department. Having and utilizing empathy in the workplace is the quickest way to identify and solve problems. If a client rails an employee for a miscommunication, a good boss will empathize and lend the tools the employee needs to get to a point of resolution. A boss who doesn't take the time to really get to know their team will see high turnover and low productivity. What to say to a no empathy boss. I have been working at company for a period of time. I would love to get to know you better and to better align our goals. Do you think we could carve out time for a meeting or for lunch at which to do so? Bad boss number five, blame game boss. Remember phones it in boss? Chances are they're also blame game boss. Under bad leadership, mistakes often happen. When these mistakes happen, coupled with the aforementioned bad leadership, guess who is not gonna take the fall? That's right, the blame game boss. The blame game boss is a leader who is quick to place a mistake on somebody's head, anybody's but their own. Everybody makes mistakes. No matter how much planning goes into certain projects, mistakes happen. When you add in bad leadership element, the mistakes are bound to be bigger. Instead of identifying the root of the problem, i.e. bad management, the blame game boss will find the individual responsible and dole out punishment. How to handle the blame game boss. While dictatorships are always the most fun, nobody wants this kind of boss. Leadership requires a good amount of respect, but fear-based leadership is, well, not gonna work. If you have a boss who constantly blames everyone and everything else, you might be able to get them to look deeper into the real root of the problems, whatever they may be. Instead of blaming one person for one mistake, one instance at a time, you might try unearthing deeper problems in the office. This could be insufficient onboarding, bad communication, or inefficient delegation. What to say to a blame game boss? I know there have been problems recently. I think that instead of blaming person or thing, we should, as a team, look at our communications issues and problem solve from there. Bad boss number six, the clone boss. This is the boss who thinks you should be just like them. In fact, they think every member of the team could do well to be more like them. This is fairly common as a just like me bias can play heavily in the interview process. Before you know it, you're surrounded by dozens of people who look the same, act the same, think the same, and who all come into the office equally depressed when their alma mater lost the big game over the weekend. Translation, hell. Repeat after me. Different people work together better. Every company needs a variety of personalities and work habits in order to make the machine work. Have 20 copies of the same person? It's not going to work. The boss who wants everyone to be just like them is a tricky type. In their mind, they are efficient, and they've worked out the perfect way to do everything, in their own way. Nothing else will do. How to handle the clone boss? Well, their way does not need to be your way. 
If you are producing good, timely work, it's time to speak up to the clone boss. Before having this conversation, gather data where you can, especially if you're switching up their way. Show how it's efficient, how it activates other employees who are otherwise underlooked, and how it affects the bottom line. Clone bosses tend to love that bottom line. What to say to clone boss? I understand you have your set of steps in which you like to work. While I have tried that way, I have seen more success when I work how I work. With my framework, I have been producing excellent work, so I hope that you can understand that I would like to continue with this set of steps. Bad boss number seven, the no respect boss. Remember all of the bosses above? Well, if you tried having truly constructive conversations with them, only to see the same habits on repeat, you have yourself a no respect boss. In a Harvard Business Review study, over 54% of employees claim they get no respect from their bosses. This is the type of boss who doesn't know your partner's name despite having met them 12 times, who doesn't listen to feedback, who rarely does any work but always remembers to collect praise for a job well done, and who has no value for input. How to handle a no-respect boss. You can try speaking frankly to the no-respect boss. However, your constructive criticism is likely to not be heard. In this instance, take care of yourself. The best way to combat the 100% no-respect boss is by empowering yourself. Learn new skills, amplify your existing skills, and talk to HR about advancing your career. What to say to a no-respect boss? Bye. In short, if you have a really terrible no-good boss, use it. Channel your frustrations into building your own future. Find a mentor. Pursue your education. Develop brand new skills. Maybe, just maybe, take the steps in your career to become the boss you never had. Bad boss number eight, the jealous boss. The jealous boss is a boss who, wait, is it your imagination or are they actually jealous of you? It's hard to believe at first. How could your boss be jealous of you? But it's true. This boss can seem harmless on the surface, but if they're outwardly jealous, imagine the damage they can do. We have one word for you, stationary. If you suspect that your boss is jealous of you, your work, your talent, or any recognition you might receive, then they will make sure that you remain completely stationary. Jealousy is ugly in all its forms. In most circumstances, we'd recommend ignoring jealousy. At work, jealousy can have far-reaching effects when it's wielded as a weapon against you. When someone with the power and influence to help or hinder your career is feeling jealousy toward you, you can't ignore it. How to handle a jealous boss. The boss and employee relationship is tricky under normal circumstances. When your boss is jealous of your work, the power dynamic has shifted into a weird limbo spot. But your boss, still technically has the power. We headed to the experts at Harvard Business Review for a little advice on handling a jealous manager. First, recognize that your boss is human too. Especially early in your career, it can feel absolutely alien to have someone senior directing jealousy-fueled anger at you. They're human, it happens. Next, according to writer Ruchi Sina, conduct an audit of your own behavior. Are you adequately sharing credit when it's due? Do you tend to peacock a little bit? Do you share success with your team? and everyone who contributed to its success? A note, we are not encouraging you to bury your success in order to help someone's ego. Instead, we're making sure that you pass yourself through an honest audit before confronting a boss that might be jealous of your success. When you experience success, especially publicly, make sure to acknowledge any help, support, and guidance that you may have received. What to say to a jealous boss? We know you want to channel a little Regina George and ask, why are you so obsessed with me? But don't do that. Handling a jealous boss is a slippery one. Make sure they feel you respect their input, guidance, opportunity, and support. Here are two situations in which you can add a little sparkle to your boss's ego. When starting a new project, I have a few ideas I'd love to run by you to see what you think. I really admire the work you did on a previous project like this one, so I'd love your input if you have the time. Here's what you can say when accepting praise for a job well done. I am so excited that we created this success together. I especially want to shine my light on my manager, whose mentorship and guidance have been crucial to my success and the success of our entire team. I'm so excited to continue working together to achieve even more. Bad boss number nine, the play's favorites boss. The further we get down the list, the closer we feel to grade school. However, just like it was in kindergarten, the shining star or teacher's pet thing doesn't necessarily go away. In fact, many times these teacher's pet situations start in the hiring process. Affinity bias occurs when a hiring manager sees something in a candidate that feels familiar to them. 
They make a hire because the candidate reminds them of themselves. If your boss plays favorites, take a deep breath. How to deal with the plays favorites boss. Our advice with this favorites boss is to keep your head down and to continue to do your work. In fact, make sure your work is great. Create and measure your own KPIs and generally keep track of your success. If you feel you're being passed over for opportunities, speak up. You don't need to accuse your boss of playing favorites. Instead, consider scheduling a review. Communicate what you've achieved so far and work with your boss to identify areas of improvement and or new opportunities for you. In a nutshell, get your boss's attention. For whatever reason, they may be distracted by someone else at work. By taking initiative, you might inadvertently call your boss's attention to the fact that others are being passed over. What to say to place favorites, boss. I enjoy my work here, but I would love more opportunity, projects, resources, so that I can take my work to the next level with the eventual goal of name your goal. I created this report of my biggest accomplishments so far and a few ideas for the next quarter and actionable ways to achieve big goals over the next year. I'd love to dissect and discuss with you. Bad boss number 10, the passive aggressive boss. Okay, who the heck promoted the passive aggressive boss? Dealing with a passive aggressive boss is tricky because the behavior is extremely immature. Beyond that, it feels outrageous to have to call your superior for acting like a sixth grader. Passive aggressive language is usually used as a means to avoid a direct confrontation while still getting your point across. Even better, if you respond to your boss's passive aggressive comments, you'll likely meet passive aggressive's lovely cousin, gaslighting. It's the relax, you're fine when your boss clearly just negged on your work in front of the entire office, or did they? How to deal with a passive aggressive boss. Passive aggression is tough to deal with precisely because it's kind of juvenile. The way we see it, you have two options. The first approach is to simply ignore it. Typically, passive aggressive comments are a sheepish way to say something without actually saying it. If your boss makes passive aggressive comments, take note and keep working. Sometimes their input might even be valid, even if the delivery is childish. What to say to a passive aggressive boss? If you don't like this advice, you could also hit it head on. There is an art to it though. Since passive aggressive language is never outwardly aggressive, you can respond at face value. For example, if your boss says something like, well, it looks like Sandra here finished this five minutes before the deadline, respond by asking your boss specifically why your work is not up to snuff. Are there mistakes? Does it differ from the work I normally present? Should I fix something? Are you unhappy with this presentation? This approach basically takes the passive aggressive behavior and flips it on its head. If you continue to laugh off or quietly stew about your boss's passive aggressive comments, they'll keep it up. However, if you address the remarks with an earnest nature, whether or not you're doing an Oscar worthy performance, your boss might just cut the passive aggressive nonsense out. Bad boss number 11, the big brother boss. This kind of boss is becoming a little bit of a thing, especially the bosses who are begrudgingly leading remote teams. The big brother boss is usually also a micromanager. They want to see what you're doing, how you're doing it, how much time you're spending on it, and they want to know exactly where you are. This is the type of boss who wants a doctor's note when you're out sick. This is the boss who will email you during your PTO. This is the boss who asks for your grandmother's name when Nana passes, then Googles her name to make sure there's an obituary. Okay, is big brother boss the worst one? Maybe. Finally, this is the boss who is only too happy to spend money on time tracking software to babysit their employees. How to deal with big brother boss. Before dealing with big brother boss, make sure to check your employee handbook and contract. Some workplaces do have language and contracts that notify employees of monitoring. If you agree to it, then you'll want to make sure everything you do on your company computer is on the up and up. Yep, that means logging out of your messages app. If you did sign a contract agreeing to some monitoring, You'll want to keep your work and personal life completely separate. If you didn't sign any agreement mentioning monitoring, you'll still want to err on the side of caution. If you use Slack, Google Workspace, or Microsoft Teams, your boss can see a lot if they want. There's an article from the New York Times Wirecutter that details what your boss can see and when. Basically, dealing with a big brother boss is boring. It's just being well behaved at work. It means no gossiping on Slack, no sharing company secrets, and imagining that everything you type out on your keyboard could be projected on the walls of your boss's office. If you don't like the possibility, or probability, of your boss actively spying on you, then it might be time to move on. We don't think the boss has the right to actively spy on their employees. Plus, don't they have a job to do? 
When an employee is onboarded in a company, they're not attending grade school nor a daycare center. Every human has a right to their own privacy and safety.